Hello trainers and welcome to another video on catching in Pokemon Go. If you've been around in the PvP community for a while, there's a statement you probably heard at least once. Chances are you also go by the principle yourself and that is, when you and your opponent have different fast move lengths and you throw your charge move with good timing, your charge move cannot be caught. Today we'll talk about why that is a dangerous half truth and also everything else you need to know about catching with different fast move lengths. Let's start with the basics. What exactly do you have to consider in a battle between Pokemon with different fast move lengths? At first, the good news is the core concepts remain the same. You want to recognize whether you can throw a threatening charge move before your opponent and when that is the case, you also want to recognize a window of opportunity where you can do that. The key difference is that in addition to determining when you can throw before your opponent, you also want to throw with good timing in relation to your opponent's fast move. And what exactly do I mean by good timing here? There are already plenty of good guides on charge move timing out there, so we won't be covering that in detail today. However, just as a super quick summary, you don't want to throw on alignment unless you have to. Cases where you might have to throw on alignment for, are, for example, when you want to throw on charge move priority and whenever possible you want to throw one turn before alignment. If you're unsure what I mean by alignment here or how to achieve that good timing, I definitely recommend checking out a guide on charge move timing first because not only will it help you understand the concepts we'll talk about in this video, but also it's a super important skill to master to become a better battler. I'll be linking one of those guides in the description. So what does this additional component of charge move timing mean for catching? And the first thing what this does is it limits your options. Especially if you're in the position that you have the longer fast move, often you have very few viable options if you want to avoid throwing with bad timing. In many cases you only have two or even one viable option. And as an example for this, let's take a look at the matchup Umbreon against Gligar from the perspective of Umbreon. When do you want to throw your first foul play? You don't want to throw your first foul play immediately because that would be poor timing. And most likely the Gligar will throw its first charge move after 7 wing attacks, so while you are doing your 5th snarl. So you want to throw your first foul play sometime after that typically. So what are the possible timings here? You don't want to throw immediately, because that would be poor timing. You also don't want to throw after 2 snarls for the same reason. You could throw after 3 snarls, however that would put you over 100 energy, so typically you also want to avoid that. Which means your only really good option here to throw your foul play would be after 1 snarl after the first charge move of the Gligar. And this is the case in very many matchups with different fast move lengths. Often, especially for the Pokemon with a 3 turn move, there's only one viable option. What exactly does this mean for catching? Does this mean it's easier to catch against 3 turn moves? And on one hand, it's absolutely true that the prediction part does become easier. However, on the technical side, you have to keep in mind that you and your opponent finish your fast moves at different times and that is something you have to account for with potential catch attempts. And that leads us to the second part of catching moves, the timing. To understand why the timing of charge move is so important, we need to talk a bit about game mechanics first. Whenever you do a fast move, you are locked into the animation of that fast move for its duration. During the animation, you are free to try to make a swap or throw a charge move, however, it won't take effect until after the fast move is completed. Which leads us back to the statement, if a charge move is thrown with good timing, it cannot be caught. It is true if you keep doing fast moves, so for example, if you're in the position of the Umbreon, you do one snarl and then throw your foul play, and if the Gligar does two wing attacks, when you throw your foul play, the Gligar should be locked into its second wing attack. So, why did I call the statement a half-truth? From what I just said, it sounds like it's completely true. And the thing here is the statement has a very important condition. And even though it may sound very obvious, it's something that a lot of players seem to forget sometimes. Because you are only locked into another fast move if you actually do another fast move. And if you don't, this opens up a lot of possibilities. So, what do you do if you're in the position of the Gligar and you want to make a catch attempt? You make the prediction that the Umbreon will throw its foul play after one snarl. You obviously can't make the catch attempt after two wing attacks because then you are locked into the wing attack when the Umbreon predictably throws its foul play. You also don't want to make the catch attempt immediately because that gives the Umbreon one and a half second of reaction time to react to the catch attempt. The obvious answer would be just do one wing attack and then make the catch attempt. Is this a good strategy? If you paid attention, you'll notice you'll make the catch attempt one turn or half a second before your opponent finishes their fast move, so which theoretically gives them half a second of reaction time. 
So at first glance, this might sound like a lot. However, in many cases, a catch attempt like this can still work. And this is because two reasons mainly, reaction times and anticipation. Let's start with reaction times. If you look up statistics about reaction times, you'll find that the typical reaction time is somewhere around 0.2 seconds. This makes it sound like, okay, 0.5 seconds is more than enough to make a good reaction. However, for multiple reasons in Pokemon Go, often that time is not enough. And first of all, one reason is that you don't really get a full half second. Latency is a thing, which in many cases already reduces reaction time to 0.4 seconds. Also, the 0.2 seconds average is achieved in situations where you're fully focused on awaiting an unambiguous signal. So, for example, you're watching a red light and you know that light at some point will turn green and it can't turn orange or something like that instead. There are multiple differences in Pokemon Go. First of all, often you are not fully focused on anticipating a catch attempt. You might be focusing on something else like keeping track of the counts. So, if you're not fully focused on something, this already increases your reaction time. The next thing is that even if you do pay attention, your brain needs time to process what you are seeing on the screen because you need to distinguish is my opponent making a catch attempt or are they doing another fast move. And processing that and making sure, okay, what am I seeing here? Is this really another fast move or is this a swap? This takes additional time. And if you add all of this together, suddenly 0.5 or 0.4 seconds is very little time. And in many cases, it's not enough. Being able to pay attention to potential catch attempt leads us to the second important contributing factor and that is anticipation. We talked a bit about this in a previous video, however it cannot be stressed enough how important anticipation is in a fast paced game like Pokemon Go PvP. If you don't plan ahead and anticipate that something like a catch attempt might happen, you won't be making a proper reaction to it the majority of the time. And the thing is that when you are in a neutral or positive matchups, most opponents simply won't anticipate a catch attempt. And even if you are in a situation where a catch attempt is somewhat obvious, a lot of players still need to pay attention to throw with good timing, because even if for experienced players it becomes natural at some point, for many players they have to pay attention. Do I throw the charge move now? Do I have to do another fast move? It can be pretty difficult and then it becomes difficult also to pay attention to both good timing and a potential catch attempt at the same time. An additional reason why even an anticipated catch attempt might work is that some players simply blindly trust the statement a charge move with good timing cannot be caught. So while they are still doing the fast move, they might already be tapping on the charge move icon and then even if they see the catch attempt happening, they can't do anything against the catch attempt anymore. So, in summary, making a catch attempt one turn before your opponent finishes a fast move can still work in situations where your opponent doesn't anticipate a catch attempt, which will typically be the case either simply because you are playing against inexperienced players or even against experienced players when you are in a situation where a catch attempt is not obvious. But what do you do when a catch attempt is obvious and you don't want to give your opponent that half second of reaction time? Is there anything you can do to increase your chances of a catch attempt being successful? And this is where finally waiting a turn comes into play. What you can simply do is, when you have the two turn move and your opponent has the three turn move, you do one fast move, then you wait a turn, then you make the catch attempt. Now you might think, hey, but if I do this, does my opponent still have half a second reaction time because they can see that I'm not attacking? And there are multiple reasons why this is a good strategy. The key difference is in anticipation, because waiting a turn before you make the catch is a strategy that most players simply don't realize exists. So if they finish their three turn move and they see your Pokemon is still on the screen, they are very likely to think you must be locked into a two turn move at this point in time. Maybe just there's visual lag and the animation isn't playing properly, which is something that can happen. Also, even opponents who do know the strategy exists might still have a difficult time properly reacting to your catch attempt because there's one more key difference. When you make the catch attempt one turn early, you're giving your opponent half a second of reaction time to react to the specific Pokemon you make the catch attempt on. However, if you wait a turn before making the catch attempt, you're still giving your opponent half a second to react to the fact that you're waiting a turn. However, they can't see what Pokemon you make the catch attempt on or if you really go for the catch attempt because you, might, you could also wait a turn and then continue attacking. So rather than being able to make a reaction to the specific Pokemon, they are only able to make the, 
a reaction to the fact that you are waiting a turn, so they have to make a call. Do they throw the charge move anyway? Do they do another pass move? Do they also wait a turn? This can be pretty difficult. Also, there's one more strategy you can use to make it even more difficult for your opponent, and that is instead of first making a fast move, then waiting a turn, you can also wait a turn and then do your fast move. This may sound like just the same, however, the difference is that your opponent will be seeing an animation when they are finishing their three turn move, so they are more likely to think that you must be locked into a fast move when they are finishing their fast move. So, overall, waiting a turn before your catch attempt is something that can increase your chances of a catch attempt being successful by quite a lot, especially when you're playing against high level opponents and also especially in the situations where a catch attempt is obvious. Now, you might be wondering if waiting a turn is so much better, why did we spend so much time talking about making catch attempts one turn early? And the thing here is that waiting a turn actually is not strictly better. The difference is that if you make the catch attempt one turn early, you can sneak in a fast move on the Pokemon you make the catch attempt on, which is something you can't do if you wait a turn. So this is especially useful if you're making the catch attempt on a Pokemon with a long fast move like Incinerate, also in situations where you really need the sneak, so even if the Pokemon you make the catch attempt on only has a two turn move, sometimes that one two-turn move of energy advantage can make the difference between outpacing your opponent to a decisive charge move or not. So essentially, if you wait a turn or not, there's a trade-off between the higher chances of the catch being successful if you do wait a turn, or getting a sneak in of a fast move if you don't wait a turn. Of course, there are also some situations where a sneak does provide no value whatsoever, especially if you're making a catch attempt on a Pokemon with low health with the only intention of making your opponent waste some energy. In those cases, of course, you should always wait a turn because it will always increase your chances of the catch being successful. Personally, I actually make catch attempts without waiting a turn the majority of the time because in my experience, even when playing against high level opponents, a catch attempt without waiting a turn will still work the majority of the time, unless of course the catch attempt is extremely obvious, in which case I will wait a turn. And to underline what I mean here by the majority of the time, as a quick example, in an iteration of the Master League in the GBL, I used a Mewtwo lead and against Ho-Oh leads I always used the same strategy. I did 7 Psycho Cuts, then I threw a Thigh Strike, then I did 2 more Psycho Cuts, then I made a catch attempt without waiting a turn. And I didn't count how often exactly I did this, but it was easily more than 20 times. And even I was just slightly below the leaderboard range, it worked every single time. So, how do things change when the fast moves have different relations? So, let's continue with reverse rolls. You have a 3 turn move and your opponent has a 2 turn move. You make the prediction that after you are synced up, your opponent will throw their charge move after one fast move. In which case, if you do another 3 turn move, you should be locked into the 3 turn move when your opponent throws the charge move. So what do you do? And essentially, for the most part, just the numbers change here. So instead of waiting 1 turn, if you want to maximize your chances of a catch attempt being successful, you wait 2 full turns and then make the catch attempt. You can also, as we just talked about, wait only 1 turn, because once again, this gives your opponent half a second of reaction time, but in many cases it will be enough and you will get the sneak. The one thing you absolutely don't want to do is making the catch attempt on sync because then your opponent has their full two turn move of reaction time and even though as we talked about half a second in many cases is not enough, a full second for many opponents is enough to make a proper reaction even if they don't anticipate that the catch attempt might happen. So does this mean when you have a three turn move making a catch is just as easy or difficult as when the roles are reversed? And the difference, of course, is that rather than your opponent having a half second to realize that you are standing still, they now have a full second to realize what is going on. However, once again, most players simply don't realize this strategy exists at all. So once again, they might think maybe the animation are just not playing properly, I'll just rely on throwing with good timing and then your catch attempt will work. However, the bigger reaction time your opponent has in this case, makes it more likely that they realize what is going on, that you are going for a catch, especially against opponents who do realize the strategy exists, it's less likely to work. However, most players don't. One additional thing to keep in mind when your opponent has a two-turn move is that even though throwing their charge move one turn before you finish your three-turn move would be the ideal timing for them, there are cases where they would not be able to use that optimal timing. 
For example, if both you and your opponent are two fast moves away from a decisive charge move and you would win charge move priority, your opponent is not able to over farm or throw with good timing because then you would be able to throw before them. So their only possible timing is throwing immediately, which rather than one turn before you finish your fast move would be one turn after you finish your three turn move. So in this case, you only have to wait one turn to make the catch attempt and optimize your chances of it being successful. Similarly, if you reach a charge move at the exact same time as your opponent and your opponent wins charge move priority, they have to throw on sync. So you don't have to wait at all. You have to make the catch attempt on the exact turn that your opponent reaches their charge moves. So basically, especially when you have the longer fast move, it can become pretty tricky recognizing with what timing your opponent has to throw a charge move because it might not always be optimal timing. However, this simply ties back to the core concept of recognizing the window of opportunity of your opponent and then making a prediction which timing might be more viable. It can just become a little more tricky because in this case some math can be involved recognizing which timing can be viable and which timing can't be viable because of fast move length. Talking about predictions, another thing to remember is that you also want to recognize patterns in your opponent's gameplay style, which can be pretty important to make good predictions. So for example, some opponents might not care about good charge move timing at all, which is something you can typically recognize pretty quickly when your opponents throw their charge move immediately, even if they don't have to, which sometimes might be on alignment, which sometimes might be not on alignment. So sometimes it's good timing, sometimes it's bad timing. If you recognize this, you adjust your predictions properly and just make the catch attempt immediately, even if that would not not be a good time for your opponent. Now, how do things change when even more different fast move lengths are involved? So for example, what when you have a four turn move and basically the concepts always stay the same. You simply have to do the math. How many turns do you have to wait? And as we talked about with three turn moves, the more you have to wait, the less likely a catch attempt is to work. However, it can still work because many players don't really pay attention to the animations properly. So for example, if you have a three turn move and your opponent has a four turn move, you predict that your opponent will throw after one fast move of their own. You do one three turn move, then you wait a turn or don't wait a turn and then make the catch attempt. If you have a predict that they will throw their charge move after two fast moves, you do two fast moves of your own and then you wait one or two turns before making the catch attempt. If you have a four turn move and your opponent has a three turn move, you have to wait two or three turns to make the catch attempt, which of course is a lot of time for your opponent to realize that you're not attacking. In this situation, even players who don't know the strategy exists might still realize, is my opponent doing this before a catch attempt? However, it can still work and especially if a catch is your only win condition, it can't hurt trying. Quick quiz to make sure you are still paying attention. How long do you have to wait when you have a two turn move and your opponent has a four turn move? Three questions. You don't have to wait at all because you simply do two two turn moves and then you are synced up with your opponent. So in summary, no matter what your and your opponent's fast move length is, the principle is always the same. You make a prediction when your opponent will throw a charge move and then you calculate how many turns do you have to wait. So you can either make the catch attempt on the exact turn that you predict the charge move to be thrown or one turn early if you want or need the sneak on the Pokemon you make the catch attempt on. And the longer you have to wait, the less likely this is to work because the opponent has more time to realize what is going on. However, no matter how many turns you have to wait, a catch attempt is always possible, especially against opponents who don't realize strategies involving waiting a turn exist. You might also have noticed that we haven't really talked about one turn moves. This is because there are some caveats you have to consider with one turn moves, so we'll be once again covering those in a separate video. Now, we already talked a bit about why catch attempts can work with different fast move lengths. So if you paid attention to the reasoning, you probably already have a pretty good idea what you want to do when you are on the different side of the field and you want to avoid a catch attempt from your opponent. However, there are some aspects we need to dive a little deeper into to have a better understanding what you can do to make it as hard as possible for your opponent to make a catch attempt when you have different fast move lengths. First, let us reiterate what are the reasons why a catch attempt might work Work, so what you absolutely want to avoid. The most important part here probably is don't fully rely on throwing with good timing and especially don't start tapping your charge move icon while you are still in your fast move animation. What you should do is pay attention to what your opponent is doing and don't tap your charge move until you are sure what is happening. And ideally you always want to focus on the animation of your opponent. 
Now, you might be in the position that throwing with good timing is something you have still to focus on. So you might say, if I focus on what my opponent is doing, I can't focus on throwing with good timing at the same time. However, in many cases, throwing with poor timing is not as punishing as your opponent making a catch attempt. So especially if your opponent has a two-turn move, throwing with good or bad timing, the difference is only one turn, which often does not make a difference. A catch is often very punishing, so you'd rather focus on what your opponent is doing rather than throwing with good timing. Now, if you do pay attention to your opponent's animation and you do realize they are standing still, you still might be unsure, are they really waiting a turn or is this visual lag? And if you're unsure, ask yourself this. How often does it actually happen to you that animations fail to play properly and how likely is it that it happens just at the same time that your opponent might make a catch attempt? It's pretty unlikely. So if you do see that your opponent is standing still, the best strategy typically is to also wait a turn and then see if they really make the catch attempt. However, waiting a turn to prevent catches, we'll be talking more about that in a separate video. Sometimes it can also be pretty difficult to pay attention to your opponent's animations. For example, some Pokemon like Lyscore cover so much of the screen that it can be very difficult to see what the opposing Pokemon is doing. Also, some Pokemon, even if they do stop attacking, they don't completely stand still because every Pokemon has an idle animation and for some Pokemon it can be very difficult to tell the fast move animation and the idle animation apart. So it takes a lot of practice to be really able to tell all of this apart and one strategy you can use if you can't really pay attention to animation is that instead you can pay attention to the type icons at the top of the screen because these are always visible and also after a swap it takes some time for the new Pokemon to become fully visible on the screen however the type icons on top of the screen update immediately so for example you can react to the typing and make a proper counter swap much more quickly by paying attention to the type icon so even if you do see the animation if you pay attention to the type icon you can make a better reaction to the specific Pokemon the catch attempt is made on. So if your opponent does make a catch attempt one turn early, paying attention to the type icons is enough to avoid the catch attempt. However, the problem is if your opponent waits a turn to maximize the chances of the catch being successful, if you pay attention to the type icons, this won't avoid the catch because when you throw the charge move, the previous Pokemon is still on the field. And if you can't pay attention to the animations for one of the reasons I listed, unfortunately there isn't much you can do except make a call or try to pay attention to the animation. So in summary, it can still be pretty tricky to avoid catch attempts with different fast move lengths in some situations. However, if you remember one thing, this already puts you ahead of the vast majority of players and that is catch attempts can happen with different fast move lengths and you should never fully rely on throwing with good timing because if you just rely on that, your charge moves will get caught. And what you want to do is you always want to pay attention to what your opponent might be doing and always anticipate that a catch attempt might happen. Ideally, you want to pay attention to the animations and if you can't do that, at least pay attention to the type icons on top of the screen. So that's it for today's lesson. In summary, when you and your opponent have different fast move lengths and you want to make a catch, you want to make a prediction when your opponent will throw the charge move, which is the same as always. But additionally, you also want to determine how many turns do you have to wait to maximize the chances of your catch being successful. If you want to avoid a catch, you simply want to remember that your opponent will only be locked into a fast move if they actually do a fast move. So you want to pay attention, do they actually do a fast move or are they making a catch attempt to make it as hard as possible for your opponent to make a catch. If we go back to the statement from the beginning, how would I update it? Rather than if you throw with good timing, your charge move cannot be caught. I would say if you throw your charge move with good timing and you pay attention, it is very difficult for your opponent to make a catch. That's it for today. I hope you learned something and can put it into good practice and see you all in the next video.